This lesson deals with mesh current analysis with a circuit that has a voltage source. You can find these notes in the course ebook in chapter 3 starting on page 13. Let's revisit an example we did with node analysis and do mesh analysis on this circuit to find the voltages V sub X and V sub Y. Now in this problem there are three meshes. Here's a mesh, here's a mesh, and here's a mesh. If we find these three unknown mesh currents we can find any other voltage or current in the circuit. In particular, we want to solve for V sub X, and that's going to be this mesh current times 250 ohms. Likewise, V sub Y is going to be this mesh current times 500 ohms. This time we'll do a four-step algorithm to solve for the unknown mesh currents, or the ones that we need. The first step is to define a mesh current if you need to. In this case, none was specified, so I'll call this current I1, I2, and I3. You could call this I1 if you wanted to, but once you pick it, just stay with it. Step two is to apply Kirchhoff's voltage law around each mesh. Now before we do that, we need to assign voltages to all the elements. This resistor had a voltage labeled V sub X, and this 500, a voltage V sub Y. I'm going to arbitrarily pick the voltage across this resistor, I'll call it V sub U. Pick this one arbitrarily to be plus and minus this way as V sub V, and this one plus to minus V sub W. If you pick them the opposite way, you just find that whatever answer you have here will just be the opposite sign. So once you pick a polarity, or a direction of current, just leave it that way and solve your problem in terms of it. We need to express each voltage in terms of either one or two mesh currents. Go around the mesh clockwise. The rise in voltage is five. The drop is V sub U plus the drop of V sub V. Now what is the voltage here? Well, it's gonna be one K times the current I1 minus I3. And the voltage V sub V is gonna be 250 ohms times the current I1 minus I sub 2. Multiplying that out and grouping all the I1 terms, I have 1K plus 250. I have minus I2 times 250. And then I have I3 minus 1000. So I have one equation and three unknowns. Go around mesh 2. The rise in voltage equals the drop. So the rise in voltage here would be V sub V. And that's going to be equal to 250 times I1 minus I2. It would be on my left-hand side of the equation. And then again, going around this loop, this current agrees with the direction of current in this element. So it's going to be 1K times I2 minus I3. That's a drop. And there's a drop here of just I2 times 500 ohms. Let's rearrange terms to have things that multiply I1, I2, and I3. Here's 250 times I1. It's the only one I have. Put on our side of the equation as a minus 250 times I1. Here's 250 times I2 becomes a positive on this side and add it to 1,000 and add it to 500 and I get 1750. And lastly, I just have a minus 1000 times I3. I have three unknowns, I1, I2, and I3. I have two equations and the three unknowns. I need a third equation, so we're gonna go around this top mesh. So let's start here. The rise in voltage is V sub W. The rise in voltage is V sub U, and the drop is V sub X. So V sub W plus V sub U equals V sub X. What is V sub W? Well, it's gonna be I2 minus I3 times 1K. This voltage is I1 minus I3 times 1K. And then lastly, V sub X is equal to I3 times 250 ohms. Again, let's rearrange terms, but everything multiplying I1, I2, and I3 on one side of the equation. Here I've got I1 times 1K. On the other side of the equation, it comes a minus 1,000. I2 times 1K, minus 1,000 on this side. And then I've got I3, bring this on the other side as a plus 1,000. Another plus 1,000, so adding that to 250, I got 2,250. Three equations and three unknowns. Okay, we can write this in a shorthand matrix notation. It says that five is equal to 1250 times I1, minus 250 times I2, minus 1,000 times I3. Zero is equal to minus 250 times I1, plus 1,750 times I2, minus 1,000 times I3. And lastly, zero is equal to minus 1,000 times I1, minus 1,000 times I2, and then 2,250 times I3. What we got here is voltage on the left-hand side, current on the right-hand side, and then a matrix where all the units here are ohms. So we'll call that a resistive matrix. Step three of my algorithm will be to solve for the mesh currents. Now solving a three by three matrix by hand is pretty tedious. So you might want to use a calculator or perhaps a math package. One such math package is called MATLAB which is actually an acronym for Matrix Laboratory. Now to run MATLAB on your own computer or in the college computers, if you're here at Michigan State, 
find the Start button, Programs in MATLAB, and click on it, or however that's laid out on your PC or the college computers. What will happen next is a, a MATLAB command window will open up, and you'll get a line prompt, and you can start to type. Now, MATLAB uses the line editor, which means that if we have things in rows, we need some way to express that. So our voltage was a vector that had three rows in one column. In MATLAB, you could say that that voltage was equal to 5, semicolon, 0, semicolon, 0. Now, when you hit the Enter button, you'll get echoed back what V is equal to in the program. And as you see, that's our three rows in one column. Now, if you made a typing mistake, you can go back by using the arrow keys and go back and change these particular values in this one or any other ones you type. Next, we'll put our matrix in for R. Say so R is equal to the first row, semicolon, the second row, semicolon, the third row. When you hit Enter, it'll echo back what that matrix should look like. And you can again see if there's a typing error. Now we have the equation V is equal to R times I, and it's a matrix now, not just a regular equation. So we need to do a matrix division. In MATLAB, if you want to solve this equation, which is really saying that the matrix I is the matrix R divided into the matrix V, and it uses the symbol I is equal to R backslash V. We'll solve for I. It gives us the values here of I1, I2, and I3. If you want more precision, you can actually ask it to do that with a long E format. Ask for I, and you'll get a lot more places. And the last step in my algorithm would be to complete the problem. We said before that V sub Y was equal to 500 times the mesh current I2, and V sub X was 250 times the mesh current I3. I could take the results for I2 and I3 and just multiply them by 500 and 250, or you could just cut the answer out and paste it and then multiply it by 500, and MATLAB will do it for you. And the value we get here agrees with what we had on page 9, but with a lot more places of accuracy. And likewise, to solve for V sub X, taking the current I3 and multiplying it by 250, we get this answer. And again, that agrees with what we had on page 9, but with a lot more places. And this is an example of doing mesh current analysis with a voltage source.